Hi, my name is Lydia Vasquez, and I live in Melbourne, Florida. My husband and I were in the military from 1967 to 98. I did mil uh, military nursing uh, for several years, back in 93 to 98. And while I was in the military, I was getting a lot of pain um, throughout my muscles, my legs, my neck especially. And it was that shawl type pain. Um, but I just didn't know what the heck it was, and the doctors didn't either. It was just kind of complaining all the time. And the, like, it was all psychological, you know. Anyway, so to make a long story short, when I got out of the military, well, while in the military, I used to get shots, uh, steroid shots in my neck for pain because I was really having a hard time. And the doctor said that he thought I had myofacial pain, whatever that was, um, but never said that might be the amount of myositis or myositis. So I just, when I came out, I came out of the military in 98. I was feeling really not so good, so I just got out. And because I was already 48 years old when I entered the military, I was doing like a, a nursing, uh, uh, what is that called, status nursing type thing. And so I got out, and about four years later, I developed this rash on my face, and everybody thought it was rosacea. But I am dark, so I said, dark people don't get rosacea. I was kind of dumb, right? Anyway, so they kept saying, oh, well, it's, you know, it's uh, probably some nervousness or you need to get unstressed. Or, and the doctor said that on, the, on base, they said, well, it's cleanliness because my fingers were um, purplish and I had that, that myositis rash, the dermatomyositis rash. But nobody knew what it was and they kept thinking that I was having some psychological situation. To make a long story short, I one day, um, and it also the rash started hurting me a lot, and it was my eye that could hardly, it was, I was getting photosensitivity, and I went to a dermatologist, and he said, did you ever have your RA tested? And I said, well, I don't know what for. He says, well, let me go ahead and do it. So when he did, he had to send my test away, and um, then when he got the results back, he said that like my myofin was like 800 and something was supposed to be only 80. Then my CPKs were like out there in the thousands. And by this time I was really having a hard time walking and driving to work. I had to lift my legs up to get out of the car and I said, what the world's going on? I was dragging myself to work and from work and into bed and out of bed. Anyway, so finally the dermatologist told me that it was, he suspected it was DM or dermatomyositis. But it was like, even in being a nurse, I had no idea what that was. I had never heard of it. So, so when the roomie saw me, the rheumatologist, and that was in Vero Beach, he said, you're really sick. And I said, yeah, I know. I feel real bad. So he says, well, you have to have a, a um, uh, muscle biopsy so that we can conclude that this is what it is, of myositis. And then he gave me the sheet of paper with all this information. I had no idea what he's talking about. And this was like around Christmas time in 2002. And I had to go visit my daughter in Texas, Colleen, Texas. And then that one day I said, you know, I feel so bad. I don't, what's wrong with me? And I went to bed that night and that, during that night I couldn't, I was laying on my stomach and I couldn't get out of bed. I thought I was having a stroke. So then I couldn't put my pants up or take them down because my fingers hurt so bad. So I called my doctor and she said, take some prednisone that she had given me just in case I needed it and come back to, come back to Melbourne. And I came back, did my, did my um, biopsy, and within a couple of weeks, I wasn't walking anymore. So I was stuck in a wheelchair for about two and a half years. I went to rehab to learn how to walk again. Well, at first they put me on intensive um, prednisone, and then they put me on mesotrexate and then they gave me Imuron. Well, the Mesotrex said I just vomited for like six months, and then I was gaining weight like you wouldn't believe. I gained 30 pounds within a month, and it was like, oh my God, I looked like the Pillsbury dough boy. Um, it was horrible. You know, the image, this, my self-image was really, like, really bad. Emotionally, I was like, out, I mean, it was rough. I never questioned why, um, but I did have faith 
I never thought I was dying, but oh, my husband thought I was going to go because I was that sick. I was really acutely sick. I was like 24-7 care, uh, bed bound. It was really weird. Well, the doctors, my doctors that I had at that time, they didn't understand a lot of it, but they did. My rheumatologist had worked with some of the medicines, and he gave me, like I said, the medications, which also the Imuron, I got pancreatitis from it, ended up having to have a catheterization, which blew my my veins in there, and I had to have surgery. It was just a lot of wrong stuff happened. <laughs> You know, but I prayed a lot. That was my thing. I prayed a lot. I laughed a lot. And um, I was like, in a way, I, I think I was like out to lunch, you know. Um, maybe I was in denial that everything was going bad. Because everybody was like, they looked at me like, you know, you're going to be okay. But we, you know, it's like the doctors, for the, the first year, it was really rough for my doctors to get me on track. It almost like I would read the signs in their face, like they were giving up on me, you know, because no medication was working. Everything was, but they never tried me on the IVIG. And of course, at that time in 2002, three time frame, that stuff was just coming out and people were just talking about it. And my doctor says, well, that resort that for people that are on, on vents, you know, on the ventilators or really, you know, I mean, really downhill, real bad. I mean, I was down there, but not as bad as other people. So he never put me on IVIG. Um, I wanted to go on uh, clinical trials, but he said, I don't want you to do that because I want you to have the right, you know, I want you to have the real meds. I don't want you to have placebos. Look, I said, with a lot of, a lot of therapy, a lot of uh, support, my church was very supportive. My husband, he was like, of my rock, really. He took care of me to the max. And unfortunately for him, though, within the year, he developed heart disease. That was there, but the trauma was too much. So, um, and I went to the, I went to my first TMA conference in 2007, I think it was. Orlando was in 2006, because my grandson was born just, when I was at conference, my daughter was delivering my baby grandson which he's, gonna, he's eight now. Well, um, my husband at that time was doing quilting, and I thought, you know what? I think I'll do that. Um, I wasn't able to sew because I was all over the place. I had some, also, um, I developed dystonia and along the, my, my right side, and then that affected my mobility, my gait, and all that. Um, taking care of things, you know, with my hands, being steady, that's what I meant. So I couldn't sew because the machine was going all over the place. So I said, okay, I'll just design the quilt, you do the quilt. And then we joined this quilt group, a guild, a guild, and they, I approached them and they helped me make the first quilt. So it was a lot of love. And I said, I really wanted to do this for the myositis because it was something that I have made that showed that, yeah, you know what, I can still do something. And that helped a lot. Being able to do things and, and for others, that was the, my, my main thing was to bring an awareness to other people, you know, for the myositis in our area, in our church. So I had a raffle. We made the quilt and we raffled it off at church and we raffled it out throughout the U.S. And so we did really nicely the first one. And then I said, OK, well, I did this one. Then we'll do another one next year. But unfortunately for me, I, I got sick with other things that came up, residuals from the myositis. And so I've kind of been dormant as far as, dormant as, far as I goes. But also developing this dystonia and the dysphonia, I have a lot, sometimes I have problems with my speech and the tightness around the, you know, my chin. Sometimes it's hard for me to form my words. Um, also my cognition, I think, has been affected by the, also I developed fibromyalgia, which I think was probably there. It's just in the back burner waiting for something else to happen. So, and, and that's why also the dystonia also, I think, was there too in the back burner because I was having a lot of movement problems, but.